Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We're following some breaking news for you. Emergency crews are on the scene of an accident between a semi and a car north of Castleton and east of Amenia. The call came in around 4.30 near the intersection of 25th Street Southeast and 158th Avenue Southeast. There have been reports of possible major injuries and a helicopter has been called to the scene. We have a crew heading there too to gather more details. So stick with us on Valley News Live for the latest. A canine unit is being thanked tonight for helping find drugs during a traffic stop in Wadena County. The Wadena County Sheriff's Office says canine unit Nitro and a deputy helped the Minnesota State Patrol with a traffic stop. The department says Nitro gave a positive identification on the vehicle that had two pounds of meth, several firearms and a bullet resistant vest inside. A Fargo man is facing one felony count of gross sexual imposition after court documents say he had sexual contact with a four-year-old. Court documents state 57-year-old Patrick Keegan touched the child during nap time. The victim told investigators that Keegan had touched the child inappropriately and tried to have sex with the child. Keegan denied having any sexual contact with the victim, but did confirm that he has slept in the bed with the child during nap time. Keegan provided a DNA sample to investigators, which has been sent to the crime lab for testing. A warrant is currently out for his arrest. Police have just identified the man who died in a crash in West Fargo over the weekend as 38-year-old Johnny Gray. Criminal charges are likely against the driver, 34-year-old Daniel Del Pazzo. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says Del Pazzo hit a parked car in the 1400 block of 10th Street Southwest late Saturday night. The impact pushed the vehicle into two other cars which were not occupied, but all were badly damaged. The victim was a passenger in the car. Del Pazzo was taken to the hospital, but there's no word yet on his condition. It's really going to feel like summer this week, but at first we have to deal with some showers for our Monday night and West Fargo even saw some pea-sized hail a short time ago. Hutch joins us with your no wait weather. Hutch. Thanks so much. A look at our sky cam shows showers and thunderstorms continuing to skirt the FM area. You are looking north, so the northern part of the metro area into northern Clay County seeing a passing shower. Not a lot of thunder and lightning left with that activity in Clay County, but you can see quite a bit moving through eastern North Dakota and northwest Minnesota. In fact, from Rock Lake, Langdon, and Devils Lake into Grand Forks, we have some fairly stout thunderstorms. Small hail potential in mainly northwest Polk County. Also, these storms are moving to the south and to the east at about 25 miles per hour. So northern parts of Grand Forks and areas along and north of Highway 2 expect heavy showers and the possibility for some small hail. Southeast North Dakota, we have storms out to our west that are drifting in our general direction. Temperature wise, it's a little below average for this time of the year in the 70s for most. 60s in Bemidji, tonight in Fargo, passing showers and storms will skirt the area as we go through the evening hours. Then overnight, things quiet down and clear out. A better chance of rain in Grand Forks over the next couple of hours, but you too should see things quiet out as we head into our Tuesday morning. I'll have details on the warmer weather around the corner here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. A former personal trainer in Fargo is now facing a handful of charges after several women say he sexually assaulted them. According to court records, David Saylor was working as a personal trainer at Edge Fitness in Fargo at the time of the alleged incidents. Court documents state Saylor asked two co-workers to participate in a medical trial for Alzheimer's. In the court records, one victim says Saylor locked her in a closet and massaged her backside. Another victim claims Sailor masturbated in front of her while she was lifting weights. Sailor has been charged with sexual assaults and disorderly conduct. He's due back in court on July 12th. We have new information on the crash that sent five people to the hospital in Lakes Country over the weekend. The Ottertail County Jail says the driver is being held on charges of DWI and felony criminal vehicular operation. Authorities say this woman, 21-year-old Michaela a uh, Kujansen from West Fargo didn't yield and pulled out in front of an SUV last night on Highway 59 near Dunn Villa and Pelican Rapids. Authorities say there was alcohol in her system. The SUV had five people inside, including two children. All but one person in that vehicle were taken to the Detroit Lakes Hospital, but were told they should all be okay. 
The North Dakota Highway Patrol took its saturation patrol to Griggs County this past Saturday, aiming to remove impaired drivers from roads in that area. Troopers issued 21 traffic citations. Of those, 16 were for speeding, two for seat belts, one for a child restraint, and two for registration. They issued 23 traffic warnings and arrested two people for DUI. Officials say in 2018, 33 people were killed in alcohol-involved crashes on North Dakota roads. President Trump signed an executive order today imposing hard-hitting sanctions against Iran. The move comes after Iran shot down an unmanned U.S. surveillance drone it claims violated its airspace. Katherine Johnson has the latest from the White House. President Trump signed off on new sanctions against Iran Monday, targeting the nation's supreme leader and his associates. Who knows what's going to happen? I can only tell you we cannot ever let Iran have a nuclear weapon. Tensions between the two nations reached a boiling point last week after Iran shot down an unmanned U.S. surveillance drone. It claimed violated Iranian airspace. I think a lot of restraint has been shown by us, a lot of restraint, and that doesn't mean we're going to show it in the future. President Trump called off a military strike last week, but CBS News has learned he did approve a cyber strike on Iranian computer systems for rocket and missile launches. New sanctions against Iran were in the works before the drone was shot down, and the Trump administration is planning additional sanctions against Iran's foreign minister later this week. For people who say these are just symbolic, that's not the case at all. Uh, we've literally locked up tens and tens of billions of dollars. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo traveled to the Middle East to rally support from allies. We'll be talking with them about how to make sure that we are all uh, strategically aligned and how we can build out a global coalition. President Trump insists he's not looking to go to war with Iran and has offered to meet the nation's supreme leader without preconditions. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, The White House. Iran has vowed to increase its stockpile of enriched uranium and is set to exceed the limits set in the 2015 nuclear deal that President Trump pulled the U.S. out of last year. Senator Bernie Sanders is co-sponsoring legislation he says would eliminate all student debt within six months and make public colleges tuition free. The Democratic presidential candidate says the 10-year $2.2 trillion cost of the College for All Act is entirely paid for by fees on the trading of stocks, bonds and derivatives. About 45 million Americans hold some $1.6 trillion in student debt. And Sanders says it's time Wall Street came to the aid of the American middle class. Bottom line is we should not be punishing people for getting a higher education. It is time to hit the reset button. Under the proposal that we introduced today, all student debt would be canceled in six months. Other Democratic presidential candidates, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, have also proposed comprehensive student debt forgiveness plans. New Minnesota laws targeting marital rape, wage theft, and drugs will go to, into effect on July 1st. Minnesotans who rape their spouses finally can be charged with sexual assault once the new laws go into effect. The state will also have what sponsors say is the country's toughest wage theft law. It comes down hard on employers who cheat workers by making it a felony, punishable by up to five years in prison and a $10,000 fine. And drug manufacturers and distributors will now have to pay much higher registration fees, which will raise around $21 million annually to help fight the opioid epidemic in Minnesota. We never want to save them just to save them. We want to save them so they can have a quality of life and have a meaningful life. A local dog rescue is asking for help after taking an injured puppy under its wing. For Love of Dog Rescue posted this photo of an eight-week-old healer who suffered lung trauma that almost killed him. The rescue says the pup has around-the-clock intensive care, which has cost them close to $11,000 so far, a total that has almost depleted their emergency care fund. And that number has some people in the Valley wondering when too much is enough, prompting Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley to talk with the rescue today, finding out they don't just take in every dog that needs help. Found asphyxiated and unresponsive, Tony was brought to the emergency vet on Friday in tough shape. He was in dire straits. He was fighting for his life. They needed a quick yes or no. And we typically always say yes if there's a chance for these guys to make it. His original caretakers couldn't afford the cost of his care. So for love, a dog stepped up to the plate, something they say they do often. 
But with Tony's medical bill hiked towards $11,000, is there a price limit the rescue has on its pups? If the vet says quality of life isn't good, we're really reaching the end. We do make those tough choices and we do choose euthanasia and we have. We do it, you know, more times than anyone knows. But if there is a chance, it's like, why stop when they're doing so well if they're making steady progress. But Tony's cuts only adds to the day to day expenses of the rescues other dogs needs, prompting Mackin to take to Facebook to ask for a little extra help. Since this bill is so high, it doesn't mean we're turning away dogs. We're still accepting them, but we ask for help when we're like we need a little boost to keep it going. And so if we have another case right after Tony, we're not as strapped. And as for Tony, Mackin says he's doing better every day, saying he's no longer on a ventilator, but he is still in an oxygen cage. He is eating, which is great. He's barking. It's always good when a puppy gets fussy because that says they've got that fight. So um, it's so he's not, still not out of the woods, but every day we're making some nice progress. In Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. Mackin says hopefully Tony will get out sometime this week, but also says she doesn't want to rush anything. To find out how you can donate to the rescue, head to our website, valleynewslive.com. Today, a groundbreaking ceremony was held for the new St. Paul's Newman Center. Officials say it will have a new chapel and faith-based student housing for 88 people, along with offices and meeting areas. The new chapel is expected to seat about 450 parishioners, compared to 200 in the old chapel. Officials say it's a $21 million project and that $18 million has already been raised. I want that opportunity for every student that uh, comes to NDSU to discover who they are, to discover their personal destiny um, in Christ uh, through faith-based programs. Officials say it will be in the same location right across from the main entrance to NDSU. The projected completion date of the Newman Center is July of 2021. A wire ribbon cutting took place to celebrate the official opening of Border State's new corporate building. The support center's function is to serve the more than 2,600 employee owners and customers in more than 100 branches across 22 states. There was an open house with guided tours and refreshments. Officials with Border State's Electric say given their history as a North Dakota company, staying in the state was a no-brainer. A lot of our employee owners asked if we were going to relocate to Denver, Chicago, something more central. But this is such an amazing community and the work ethic is so great here. To try to replicate these 370 employee owners in another community would be impossible. The company's old offices and location will now be used by the City of Fargo and the Fargo Police Department. A startling and blowing